Hi, GOR. This is Unit 3, Lesson 8, and this is the last lesson for Triangle Congruent Proof. So we made it. We made it to the end. There's a little summary for Exercise 1, so why don't you pause the video and see if you can fill this out. All right, I'm going to continue this, and when you're done filling it out, then you can turn it on again and see if you knew it. So I want to list the five ways of proving triangles congruent. The first one is my favorite, side, side, side. These do not have to be in any particular order. Side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Both have two angles in one side. It depends if the side is between the two angles or not. And then hypotenuse leg. Remember, for hypotenuse leg, you have to have a right triangle. So you should know those five ways. What ways cannot be used to prove triangles congruent? And that's angle, angle, or side, side, angle, or angle, side, side. Okay, those are not ways to prove triangles are congruent to each other. So this is like a little summary of what we got going on so far. In order to pair to prove a pair of corresponding sides or angles are congruent, what do you have to do first? Well, you have to prove the triangles are congruent. So if you're ever asked to prove sides or angles, first you're proving the triangles are congruent, and then the corresponding sides or angles are congruent. The abbreviation that I use to prove that those corresponding um, sides or angles are congruent is CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But remember, first you must prove that the triangles are congruent to each other. All right, so let's try a proof together. Statements on the left, reasons on the right. There are other ways to do proofs. Some people do paragraph proofs. I find them a little bit more challenging to do though for students. I like to just list each statement has a reason that matches up with it. Some people do flowchart proofs, but I find these statement reasons the easiest type of proof there are. So I have all my given is step one. Let's mark our diagram, NQ. Where's NQ? NQ is congruent to MQ, great. And PQ is perpendicular to NM. Now, I hope everybody knows by now that perpendicular lines form right angles. So I can say that those angles are right angles. So go ahead and try and do that. Angle one and angle two are right angles. We've done this a number of times. How do I know they're right angles? Because they're perpendicular lines, and perpendicular lines form right angles. So angle one and angle two are right angles. The reason is definition perpendicular lines. Now if they're both right angles, that means they both equal 90, they both have to be congruent to each other. Angle one is congruent to angle two because all right angles are congruent. All right, so I used up my given. I said that my sides were congruent. I dealt with the perpendicular lines. They formed the right angles. They said the right angles are congruent, but I don't have enough marked on my picture to say my triangles are congruent. That's when you look at your picture and there's two things that you have to look for that are not in the given. One is to see if they share a side, which is what I have in this one, and the other is to see if they have vertical angles. This one, I have a shared side, I just say that side is equal to each other, so QP is congruent to QP. Could I say PQ? Absolutely. Something is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Now I have enough marked on my picture. I'm done with my proof when I can say what they asked me to prove. They asked me to prove that my triangles are congruent. Triangle PQN on the bottom is congruent to triangle PQM. Reason is side, angle, side. All right, just because it's a right triangle does not make it a hypotenuse leg proof. I don't have the hypotenuse. I have the sides, the two legs on either side of that right angle. All right, and I just have one more on the back. And then we're gonna practice and then we'll do some review. All right, so angle one is congruent to angle two. I mark that. Angle E, A is congruent to angle E, and C is the midpoint of AE. All right, angle A is congruent to angle E, and C is the midpoint of AE. 
Remember, a midpoint cuts a segment in half. So I am cutting C, uh, AE in half. Go to AE, which is right here, and cut it in half. So the left half equals the right half. I mark it on my picture, and now I'm going to add it to my proof. AC is congruent to CE. Everything that's marked on your picture must be aligned in the proof. Just because it's marked doesn't make it part of your proof yet. It has to be a statement and a reason. How do I know that AC is congruent to CE? Well, because I had a midpoint. So I'm just going to write definition midpoint. And actually, if you're looking at my picture, I have enough now to say my triangles are congruent. I ultimately want to prove that BC is congruent to DC, but I first prove the triangles are congruent. You're always proving the triangles are congruent first. Then you can say any segments or angles are congruent. So the triangle on the left, triangle ABC, is congruent to the triangle on the right, triangle EDC. And the reason is, look at your picture, look what's marked. I have two angles and one side. The side is between the two angles, so I have angle, side, angle. Once the triangles are congruent, the rest of the corresponding parts are congruent. So BC is congruent to DC, and that reason is CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's it for today. We were done with our last lesson in this.